Hey there, welcome to Cloud and Sec, where we dive into technology that shapes our world. I'm Andre Camillo, and today we're going to explore the unsung hero of our digital lives, the operating system, or as I like to call it, and as everyone likes to call them, the OS. I like to think of the OS like conductor to a jazz band. These worlds, they don't really mix, right? We don't ever see a conductor in a jazz band. However, when we think of the complexity of these different themes, we can see where they match. Think about how complex a jazz song is. Very complex. It's full of improvisation and technique, but somehow it all comes together beautifully. The thing with jazz though is that Naturally, players know how to feel the music themselves and they will improvise along others in the band. But in the context of technology or a broader context, we can think of a conductor that is actually thinking about how things are playing well together as a third part, right? So when we think of this conductor piece, we can think of an entity that is ensuring that every piece that is making part of that song or symphony, if you will, or even that band, plays in harmony. This, in my view, is how an operating system or an OS coordinates all the parts of a computer, a smartphone, or pretty much any device that you are working with. So operating systems are the backbone of every device that we use from our smartphone to our laptop and even to embedded systems that in technology that we don't often think that they have an operating system. Operating systems, they manage the complex tasks that make our devices work, often without us even noticing. So today I'm breaking down the different types of operating systems and how they operate, giving you a high level understanding of this very important technology. So going back to my previous analogy of music, which is a theme that I love, just as there are multiple genres of music, there are multiple types of OSs, each designed for specific needs. There are days where you are feeling a little bit more upbeat and more energetic, and so you wanna to listen to something that suits you. But at times there are specific needs that you have, such as, hey, I wanna calm down, so let's listen to something else different. Of course, when we think of devices, there are operating systems that will help you achieve specific tasks and utilize devices to their specific needs. That's the analogy here. Traditionally, OS types have been categorized into several groups, including, and this is coming from my research on multiple websites, I'm gonna paste the, uh, my sources in the description, and you can also find my blog where I disclose all my sources. But these several groups of types of operating systems include batch operating systems, time sharing, distributed operating systems, network operating systems, real-time operating systems, and even general purpose OSs. And of course, more as the technology evolved and as the industry evolved, we can also see the development of new operating systems such as mobile operating systems. And this has happened for the past couple decades if you think about it, right? With the um, announcement of devices such as the iPhone back in 2007. Today, I'm focusing on the most impactful type of OS, which is the general purpose OS. This type of OS includes user devices or user OSs such as Windows, Mac OS and Linux which is one of the three that you're probably using while you're watching me, right? These are the operating systems you are likely to interact with every day. And as I mentioned earlier, general purpose OS is much like a jazz band. Jazz is intricate, very complex, it, it's fair share of improvisation, yet it all comes together in a harmonious performance. Similarly, an OS brings together various hardware components, like the CPU, memory, storage, and even devices. And the OSs ensure that all of these devices work in sync. This orchestration transforms a collection of parts into a functional, user-friendly device. And without the OS, your computer or smartphone would just be a pile of useless components. When unable to perform any, even the simplest tasks. Now at the heart of general purpose OS is the kernel. This is the OS's central command the conductor of our jazz band, if you will. The kernel operates on a CPU architecture known as the von Neumann architecture. 
and according to Lenovo, the architecture, the Phonema architecture, includes CPU, memory, input, output devices, and storage. In this architecture, it states that the CPU fetches instructions from memory, performs calculations, and controls the overall performance of the computer system. And this diagram that I'm showing up right now, it's something that I created alongside different tools, right? Utilizing something I mentioned in the past here, such as the mermaid uh, diagramming tool. Now, what you're seeing there is a representation of how these general purpose OS key components interact with themselves. Think about at the top there, you can see the user space. This is the environment where your applications run. run. And generally the user space is required and utilized to shield uh, users from direct access to what we call low-level hardware. Low-level hardware are the very instructions and spaces in memory where you can actually access specific parts of memory. Now, when you try to access that or when the kernel and the drivers try to access low-level hardware, that is a highly privileged uh, activity because, well, it can lead to exceptions, it can lead to errors that may as well impact the entire functioning of the OS. That's why the user space exists, so that it protects the user from accessing this undesired and very highly privileged sections in the hardware. Next up, there's Shell and System Calls API. So these are the interfaces through which the user space communicates with the kernel. The kernel, this is the core of the OS. It manages the hardware and system of operations. And then there's file system and device drivers, which are managed by the kernel. These components are enabled interaction with physical devices. And lastly, there is hardware, the physical components that are managed by the kernel through file system and device drivers that I mentioned before. Now, why am I bringing up this topic of OS to you? Because, well, this is research I've been doing a lot lately. I've been thinking about how security is embedded into current operating systems. And as we know, security is paramount. Uh, and security being part of uh, devices is paramount in order to assure that you are not utilizing or that you're not victim of malicious software. Now, software loaded during the boot process in these general purpose OSs, they are leveraging high privileges. And, and so this is very critical. So what happened recently is Microsoft released a document uh, stating why uh, security applications should be using or gen generally utilize kernel drivers. So I'm showing you this page from Microsoft. And essentially they go through why and what are the reasons that uh, security applications utilize uh, kernel drivers, right? So some of these reasons include visibility enforcement. So because kernel drivers provide system-wide visibility crucial for detecting threats. Think about the most nefarious thre threats such as boot kits and root kits, which are oftentimes invisible for user and even app security applications if they are loaded in memory before even these uh, security applications load. Next up, there's performance. Uh, when you have a kernel driver, you can optimize performance, particularly in high throughput scenarios like network data analysis. And there's also the, the matter of tamper resistance as part of the security uh, control part of it. You want to ensure that you, your application is not tampered with by any other application. So then having the ability to prevent uh, tampering in your application is critical for security applications. This is part of the integrity component of the CIA triad, for example. Now, given the criticality of these components, software providers must undergo rigorous validation processes. And in this document, Microsoft also describes how they ensure this through multiple step certification processes, including static code analysis, runtime verification, memory scans, and ongoing monitoring, including a very thorough uh, process for, to validate uh, any drivers and kernel level drivers that are created by security um, providers. Now, this image that I'm showing to you right now is a look at user mode and kernel mode. And this image is also provided by Microsoft. And I think it helps as exemplify why there is a need for security applications to run in these very different modes, if you will, in general purpose operating systems, particularly in when Windows, which relies so heavily in kernel drives, right? Drivers. Now to wrap up, um, OSs are the quiet conductors of our digital lives. Think of 
um, how they coordinate the complex tasks that make our devices work well seamlessly to us. And so I hope that by understanding these types and functions, you gained a little bit more deeper appreciation for how these operating systems work and how, of course, technologies that we need, such as security components, uh, also work with them. So thanks for joining me today here um, in understanding this topic. And if you find this helpful, make sure you subscribe for more insights into technology that powers our world, right? Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think about it. And I'm Andre Camillo. This is, of course, my channel. And until next time.